Raider Nation, what's going on? we got some breaking news here. The Las Vegas Raiders are moving on from offensive lineman DJ Fluker. And let's say this, if you're trying to get some better sleep, maybe you're not sleeping well, shout out to our sponsor, 8sleep, for hooking up the nation here. Go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports. That link's going to be available to you all down in the comments, down in the description of today's show. So I wanted to be able to make this video because right now I do think one of the biggest weaknesses surrounding the silver and black from the offensive side of the football and from the defensive side of the football is what exactly this offensive line is going to look like. And I'm not going to sit up here and say that we anticipated that Fluker was going to be a starting caliber player for this team, but it was a guy that the silver and black signed last offseason that spent some time on this practice squad and at 6'5", 350 pounds, formerly out of Alabama. And funny enough, this is literally the first ever player that Tom Telesco drafted all the way back in 2013, which is a pretty mind-blowing stat to hear out loud. And on top of that, there were two players that Telesco drafted, to my knowledge, on the Raiders. DJ Fluker, Asta La Vista. He said, get the fluke out of here. And then also, you want to talk about Jerry Tillery. Also said, get it stepping. Bottom line, I know this. When Raiders news happens, we got you covered. We break it all down for you. Also coming up here on the show, since you decided to move on from Fluker, and since, let's face it right now, your offensive line, you still probably got to add a few more pieces here for a little bit of depth. We're also going to take a little bit of a deep dive into some right guard, offensive tackle options out there for the silver and black. And if you don't know, Jeremy Chuggs and I, we're going to be live later on today, 4 p.m. Eastern time for a little Raiders Friday happy hour. So as it stands right now, this is what the Raiders offensive line currently looks like. And you got Thayer Munford at right tackle, Dylan Parham at left guard, Colton Miller at left tackle, Andre James at center. I would say the only positions that are a lock to be the starting caliber players this upcoming season are Miller, Parham, and James, which means your entire right side of the offensive line is a little bit of a question mark. I do believe one of the reasons why the Raiders decided to make this move now is because last week, they decided to re-sign Jordan Meredith. And if you were to ask me out of the two guards who has a better chance of playing, was it Fluker or Meredith, I would have said him. Now, same thing, like just because you decided to bring back Jordan Meredith does not make me sit up here and say like, that's the Raiders' right guard, problem solved. No, not at all. I am still realistically only confident in Six players on this offensive line, like Dalton Wagner, I can make an argument, might be a good player. Jordan Meredith, to me, needs to be like your seventh or eighth best offensive lineman. The Silver and Black still have a big-time need on the interior, and we're going to talk about a few names there. But one of the things that we do here on the Raiders Report is I want to know what you guys have to say. I am a talkative dude. I love hearing what the nation has to you know, just say with their chest, right? And this is your opportunity to go down in the comment section and give me your confidence level in the Raiders offensive line. I'm not going to talk so much about Fluker because to me, the more important story here is the Raiders moved on from Fluker. We have an offensive line. How can we make this one a little bit better? So let me know. Scale it from 1 to 10. 1, you're not confident at all. 10 this is the best damn offensive line in the National Football League. My answer on this one is a seven. I have a lot of confidence in Colt Miller. I have a lot of confidence in Dylan Parham, Andre James. I am hoping and praying that Thayer Munford can turn into that solid player. But, like, you still have a little bit of a weakness there, at least one of your starting positions. Like, four out of five is okay. Munford still has to be able to prove to me that he's able to do it. And then after that, no disrespect to Brown and McKenzie, I have no faith in those players whatsoever. So you still have to go out and build a little bit better of an offensive line. The other part of this equation is you got a brand new offensive line coach. Carmen Brasillo to me was one of the best in the biz. And now you got a new guy in James Craig who I do think can do a solid job and has done a solid job with the San Francisco 49ers over the past two seasons with the LSU Tigers with his time at the SEC. I have confidence, but there is still a lot of unknown pieces and the way that Telesco thinks, the way that Antonio Pierce thinks, if you want to be a physical football team and if you want to beat people up in the trenches, it starts up front. So they still need to go out and add a right guard, which we'll talk about some right guards here in just a minute. So coming up here, we're going to talk about some free agent, also some draft players to look at at this position. I've done a show before with saying like, I actually really like the tackles a lot more than some of the right guard prospects. And Greg Van Roten, he's even visiting with a team. We'll talk about all of that coming up here in just a moment. But if you don't know, better sleep, you got to get it. It is 
probably one of the most important things out there. My dad always tells me, Mitch, I'll sleep when I'm dead. You know what? Sometimes I can't wait to get to bed because when I get snuggled in with my eight sleep, dude, it totally is a game changer. Alex likes to sleep when it's super hot. I like to have it nice and cold, and that's one of the cool parts about this thing where it can be as low as 55 degrees. It can be, you can turn it all the way up to 110. Like, Today's episode is brought to you by 8sleep because I did want to tell you guys about our awesome sponsor, this high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues. 8sleep's Pod 3 cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling that keeps you comfortable sleeping deeper for a better more restful night. The pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet, kind of like what I was telling you guys about. It can get up to 110. It can get as low as 55 degrees. In addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics on average. Pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after a, a month on the pod. So if you're like, damn, that's pretty freaking cool. I agree. Go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports and get $200 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8sleep. Invest in the rest you deserve with the 8sleep pod. I don't know if there's anybody out there like me. I'm a snuggler. And when I snuggle, I like to snuggle with my dog, Chuck. He's usually sleeping right in this area between my legs. And then I got Alex. She's like right here on my arm. I, I'm already warm when I sleep. Luckily, now with Pod, I can snuggle with Chuck, I can snuggle with Alex, and I can stay cool. And then that way, when I show up to work, you guys are like, all right, this guy's bringing the energy. I'm going to be bringing the energy today on Raiders Friday Happy Hour, so I better see you there. All right, let's talk about some of these potential right guard targets that the silver and black could look at. And, you know, Fluker, he's played offensive tackle. He's played offensive guard. But I think the only way that he would have saw the field this season is at right guard unless they would have decided to kick Parham over to the right side and maybe kick Fluker over as a potential backup at left guard my point is though one of the reasons why I'm a little bit nervous of what the silver and black are going to do at this position is because you can look at some of these names here right like there's not a lot of outstanding names at the right guard position. Like, could you sign a Mark Lewinsky? Doesn't give me a lot of confidence. Are you going to potentially draft a Christian Mahogany on day three? Are you going to target somebody like Christian Haynes in round two, round three? Or are you going to go back to somebody like Greg Van Roten? Hell, he's visiting with the Seattle Seahawks. He had his visit, I want to say, on Wednesday. And sounds like it went pretty well. That's a team that's going to be looking to potentially add somebody to replace some of the guys like a Damian Lewis. But to me, the biggest overarching question for the Raiders on their offensive line right now is, what exactly are you going to do with their Munford? I had the opportunity to speak to Munford a few weeks ago, and he told me that he wants to play offensive tackle. Telesco said that, well, he might play offensive guard and he might also play offensive tackle. I've kind of flirted with the idea of kicking Munford over to left guard. I think also you could flirt with the idea of kicking Munford into right guard if you like one of the right tackles a little bit better in the 2024 NFL draft, which I do. Another big time question is what exactly are you going to do with Parham? Because Parham has played right guard. He's played right tackle. He's played center. He's played left guard. Not all of those in the NFL, but he has some of that versatility that you're looking for. And for Las Vegas right now, you know that you have a good starting base on your offensive line but history has shown that Telesco the position that he drafts more than any position out of them all on the offensive side of the football is on the offensive line so to me I like a lot of the right tackles and if it was up to me I would kick Thayer Munford either the left guard or right guard and same thing with Parham I'm either going to keep Parham at left guard or kick him over to right guard and I'm trying to target one of these top offensive tackles in the draft and I think it's kind of funny because I talked about a rumor story that I heard yesterday from one of my buddies with the Dolphins that the Raiders tried to trade up with Miami. They offered pick 44, 77, and 120, or pick 112 to try to get to pick 21 for Miami. The Dolphins said no to that. The other reason why I absolutely believe that and I find it intriguing is because the Raiders at pick 13 can get a Talisi Fuaga. You can get a J.C. Latham. But if you were able to get another pick at the back end of the first round, that's where you're probably looking at a Marius Mims, a Tyler Guyton. Now, Rosengarten is more of a round three, round four type of offensive tackle prospect. But the more and more speculation around the quarterback's situation leads me to believe that you're going to have to take either guy at 13 or you're going to need multiple picks to trade up. The Raiders still need to be able to figure out, though, some part of that right side of the offensive line, whether it's offensive guard or whether it's right tackle. So let me know down below. It's going to be the final question that I asked the nation today. Give me a yes or 
You can give me a no. Just be an overachiever and explain your answer is all I ask. Do the Raiders need to draft an offensive lineman in the first two rounds? Give me a yes. Give me a no. My answer on this one is if you decide that quarterback is not going to be your option. Like, if the Raiders say to me, we're not trading pick number 13. We're going to take a quarterback. Let's say it's Penix at 13. Then my answer is yes, you need to go out and figure out a way to get an offensive lineman. If the Raiders want to trade up, well, then you're not going to have that opportunity. But it to me, if you were going to go into this offseason with the offensive line that they currently have, which right now would be Jordan Meredith as a starting right guard, you need to figure out a way to make that offensive line better because the last thing that I want to do is draft a young rookie quarterback or even, hell, have Aiden O'Connell, have Gardner Minshew stand behind a line that, let's face it, doesn't wreak a lot of confidence, especially on one side of the football. In NFL games, it is one in the trenches. The Raiders are going to win in the trenches on the defensive side with that and Christian Wilkins. I want them to be able to win on the offensive side of the football, especially if you want to be a power run team, which I do believe Luke Getze and, um, and Antonio Pierce does. All right, y'all, getting ready to head on out of here. Appreciate y'all for tuning into the Raiders report. I'll see you. Chugs and I are going to see you here in a few hours. Raiders Friday happy hour, 4 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Pacific. We got a few surprises up our sleeve, so I don't want you to miss it.